Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to Sports Talk with Broads. We are broadcasting live from the Manscaped Man Cave. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BROD at manscaped.com. I am pissed off. You would think I'd be stoked, right? You would think I would be jumping up for joy. Matt Klintak is no longer the GM. He stepped down. My ass, he got fired. Although, he's still going to be in the organization because I would imagine that they don't want to just throw away money after signing him to an extension. So instead of paying him to do nothing, they feel the need to keep him inside the organization somehow, whether it's picking up the damn loose balls after practice or whatever the case may be. I don't want to see him anywhere near the front office positions. So get the hell out of my face, Matt Klintak. But the reason why I'm so disgusted is what John Middleton put on display for this entire fan base. That press conference was embarrassing. It shows me that he has no clue what the hell he is doing and this organization is in such a terrible spot. They're not even close. They really are not even close. And then you hear about how long it might take to actually get the GM that they want. In what universe? This is such a big offseason for this team. You need to head into the right direction and you're just going to take your damn time because COVID might limit people to come in. It might limit your GM search. Make it not. It's that simple. You have the power to make sure that it doesn't affect your GM search. So do that. Do that. Go out there and actually make it happen. Andy McPhail, oh, he's got one year left. He's going to help me. That's what John Middleton says. Andy McPhail is going to help him with the new GM search. Really? The same guy that helped pick Matt Klentak, who's a bum, who sucked at his job, who set this franchise back how many years? This is awful. I mean, it really is. Hearing John Middleton speak just made my my uh my feelings towards this team my optimism towards this team just plummet because they are in such a disgraceful position as a franchise you know John Middleton tried selling to us that Andy McPhail is a world series champion and he's such a genius oh hall of fame you know when he was successful I wasn't even born yet! It's incredible. Don't try and backtrack on some of the things that you've said in the past. I mean, here John Middleton is lying to all of us. The media was calling him out. You know, John Middleton, you said this. Why did you say this and then went into another direction? Or, you know, you mentioned that the offseason the Phillies had last year, no one's had anything like it. He goes, I didn't say that. Well, yes, you did, you liar. Yes, you did. Uh, It's all over the place. There's so many things that irritate me and make my blood boil when it comes to that horrendous press conference as a whole. It's honestly so ridiculous. John Middleton is a fraud. He really is. He's a fraud. And now we're all realizing here in Philadelphia how many issues there are when it comes to these franchises and the ownership group. Joshua Harris, David Blitzer, sucks! John Middleton, sucks! Jeffrey Lurie, look, there's some rumors flying around that he was the reason why J.J. Ortega-Whiteside was here, that he puts his fingerprints onto things. Sucks! Then he got the Flyers putting together a nice piece right now. So I won't go to the extreme and start screaming at them yet. But it's clear things need to change. All right? So John Middleton mentioned, by the way, uh, let's go to who's going to be the interim GM. Because you're going to have Ned Rice being the interim GM until they figure this thing out. This is a clone of Matt Klentak. A clone. So you're not changing much. You're honestly having the same philosophy as of right now when Rice is in play. And the fact that you don't know how long it's going to take to get your GM, that's a problem. That's an issue. How does he not see that you need to be quicker on your feet to go out and get a guy? Now, if I'm John Middleton, it's pretty simple, right? This isn't rocket science. 
Look at how much money that you're giving Clentac or how much you gave Clentac to spend. A lot of money, a gross amount of money, and he came up with slop as a team, as a bullpen. Look at that price tag that you paid. Call Tampa Bay. It's that simple. Tampa has no money to work with, yet here they are. They they are very unique when it comes to building their roster. They have no money to spend, yet they are at the top of the AOEs beating out the damn Yankees. Pick up the phone! Pick up the phone, John. Pick up the phone. Call Tampa Bay. Like, this isn't rocket science. Go ahead and pick somebody in that organization. Call the Oakland A's. They have zero money, yet they're honestly in it all the time. They're engaged. With a payroll that doesn't even sniff the Phillies' payroll. I feel bad for Bryce Harper. I really do. He's in a horrendous situation. He got sucked in. He got sucked in and apparently didn't realize how much of a joke this franchise is. Middleton talking about how long it's been since they've, uh, you know, developed prospects. So that's been a problem for 100 years. No shit! No shit it's been! You set this franchise back, John Middleton. For allowing Klentak to do whatever he did. Talking about uh, these first round draft picks that you missed on. Well, why is that, John? Because you put someone in position who wasn't good at his job. So doesn't that come back on you? Isn't that your problem? You just allowed him to keep going and keep going year after year after year. This was a five-year window of disgraceful drafting. Alec Boehm, all right, Alec Boehm's a nice player. One doesn't count. One isn't enough. One is not even close to being enough. This system is embarrassing, and you can't call guys up because there's nobody there. I don't even like Spencer Howard at this point. I tried to be optimistic, but he hasn't shown me a damn thing. He probably stinks like the rest of them. You think it's been an issue? Well, then change things. John Middleton changed things. You talk about pitchers coming out of this organization. Cole Hamels, Aaron Nola, Carrasco, Hap. I mean, it's barely been any. It's such a huge window. Change the philosophy. Where, where are the scouts? The scouts. Fire them to the sun. Get new scouts in here. Find a new way to utilize your analytics because they're not working. I'm not anti-analytics. I'm anti the Phillies analytics because with the big analytical team that they have, it's been bad. It's been so bad. So you need to clean out everything from top to bottom when it comes to prospects, when it comes to the minor leagues. And do you know how long it takes to rebuild that? Let's say five years. Oh, okay. Bryce Harper's how old? The way I like to kind of tie this together is, uh, here's an example I should say. It's a little different, but it's similar. Bear with me. Saquon Barkley. The Giants drafted Saquon Barkley with that second pick, and then they went later on to take their quarterback. So you take your running back, and by the time your quarterback is developed into what you want him to be, Saquon Barkley's time is done. Because in the NFL, running backs, they don't last very long. Like I said, a little different from the Bryce Harper situation, but a similar philosophy. By the time you draft your quarterback, you make him what you want him to be, and then he has turned into that guy, the running back is over. He's done with. Saquon isn't going to be the same player that you drafted him the year that you drafted him in the couple years after. Well, you got Bryce Harper. You signed him to the big deal. And now you got to redo everything. You got to wipe this thing clean. You have to start over. By the time you get the prospect pool the way you want it to be, Bryce Harper's mid 30s. You wasted the prime of Bryce Harper. He's got to be kicking himself because this is embarrassing. Embarrassing. This Phillies organization is a nightmare. They are in a horrendous spot. They're in an awful spot. Things are headed in the wrong direction. 
We thought that there would be some spark with this club after Bryce Harper, right? We got so excited. Joe Girardi. John Middleton is a fraud. He's a fraud. It pisses me off. What doesn't piss me off is BetQL because BetQL wins me money. So what I do is I go on the BetQL app and I look at all the analytics. I look at the analysis for each game, the trends, where the sharp money is headed, which is where the professionals are betting. And I just suck their information in. I put it in my little DraftKings Sportsbook app. Boom. And I pick all the winners. Every single week, I'm cashing out left and right. If you use promo code BRODES20 at BetQL.com, you get 20% off of your first purchase. It's a no-brainer. So you you buy BetQL, you purchase that for your first payment, you get 20% off, and the amount of money you make, the return in investment, it's ridiculous. It's a no-brainer. Also, we're implementing an NFL weekly pick em pool presented by BetQL. We are giving away weekly prizes on top of that, a grand prize, courtesy of Rosnob Jewelers, a championship bracelet. All the information is down below. Go sign up now. Oh, where do we go from here? Let's talk about the JT Real Muto situation, why don't we? So here's John Middleton talking about JT Real Muto, and he's saying, oh, how about the governor? What are the governor and mayor saying about when it comes to, you know, having people in the stands and our financial stuff? Oh, okay. I mean, what a, what a ridiculous statement. He threw Clintac under the bus. When he was talking about the baseball people, he trusted the baseball people to get the job done on JT Real Muto after making the Sixto Sanchez trade. Well, let me throw something back at you, John. If you realize your baseball people aren't getting the job done, when do you step in to make sure you get the job done? It's not that hard to think about overriding people. Pretty damn recently, over the last year or so, you talked about how you like to be involved. You're not just a plant sitting in the corner, right? Bryce Harper, big signing with Joe Girardi. You overstepped Clentac. You got rid of Gabe Kapler. Excellent move, in my opinion, right? You have your fingerprints in here. Yet when it comes to JT, you're just sitting on your ass and you're sitting on your hands. Now, why is that? It's because you're a fraud who doesn't want to spend any more money and you're trying to blame it on other people. You know, you're talking big about, oh, I would have never done it if I didn't Get to extend him. Well, then extend him. Extend him. You had the ability to extend him. You didn't. You knew that your baseball guys weren't going to do it. So when you realize that, it's pretty easy. I'm going to do it. I'm going to step in. Zach Wheeler, another guy that you helped sign and, and gave a big payday to. Yet here's a situation in JT. I'm not against not bringing JT back, but then you don't trade Sixto Sanchez. Like, for them to not understand what Sixto Sanchez was and to put him in the deal, that's part of the scouting issue. That's part of the developing issue with this franchise because good franchises don't allow him to go. Or I could spin it this way. Good franchises have enough prospects where you can live with giving up a prospect that works out. Because you have so many, it doesn't crush you like it does the Phillies. It crushes you because you miss all around. Mickey Moniak blows. Plenty of these prospects that you call up, they blow, okay? So look at the Atlanta Braves, for example. They have a hell of a system. And you can move pieces to acquire someone like JT if you have other prospects available to then... Move them along. But you don't have that here, so it crushes you so much more than other organizations in Major League Baseball. Do you see? Do you see how that could be a problem? So with JT, like I think that there are so many holes that you signing JT, and because of the luxury tax, you're going to have a billion other issues Because you're bringing JT back. So as long as, if they do let him walk, which at this point he's hitting free agency, you're not going to get him. You're not getting 
JT Real Muto. It's just not happening, so get it out of your head. There's no way this organization, after what we have heard, is going to actually pay this man the money that he wants. So with that being said, he's hitting free agency for a market. You know they had to fight about money earlier. It's just not going to happen. So fill the holes properly with the money you're not spending on JT, and then I will feel different about it. But allowing Sixto Sanchez to go, having to deal with him, he just pitched in a playoff game and helped them get to the NLDS, the Miami Marlins, that is, which is a joke. But they're playing fun baseball right now. They're actually fun to watch because they're that underdog story. Good for them, and I'm rooting for Sixto. I know that there are some people out there who can't stand him, Oh, I could stand him all right. I my, my mouth drops and I start drooling watching the kid pitch because he's a stud. A stud! It would have been Sixto Sanchez, Aaron Nola, Zach Wheeler as the three. I, I really believe that Sixto Sanchez is going to be better than Aaron Nola. And that would have been your three and that would have been lethal. But no. But no. The two years of control crap that Clentac sold us, tried to sell us at least, Fireable fence. See, that move almost told me that their plan, or they thought that this team was closer than it was. Because if they were like, okay, let's make that move two years of control, you made that move thinking the two years of control was what was going to put this team over the edge to go win a championship? Far off. 500 team, 500 team, they stink. They stink. They're just around a 500 team. Now you come back. What's the deal with Didi? You have no clue what's happening at shortstop. Gene Segura, another year. Scott Kingery. Look, giving him all that money. And Scott Kingery, I'd rather have Cesar Hernandez at second base. Let that sink in. Adam Hazley, does Joe Girardi hate Adam Hazley? It does seem that way. I don't know if he got a true fair shot specifically batting against lefties. But even Adam Hazley, I'm not a hater. I'm not a lover. Clearly, he can't play with the corner outfield whatsoever. The dude forgets how to catch a baseball. I thought he had pretty decent defense at center field. But this year, he was a disgrace defensively. He was a first-round pick. And on a good team, Adam Hazley's like your fourth guy. And I can live with that. But you you picked him eighth overall. You picked him in the first round. Between that, Mickey Moniak, it's bad. And it's going to take such a long time to actually get this back. This was clearly a news dump, by the way. Saturday, mid-afternoon. You know what their philosophy was? Well, the Eagles play Sunday night. Monday, the Eagles are going to be the hot topic. That's what everyone's going to be talking about. Everyone will forget about us by then. And I mentioned, uh, like what, a week ago or so when I was waiting for him to do it? I said, dude, do it on a Sunday. Do it on a Saturday. Do it so no one talks about it. But when it was this ugly, when it was this miserable, and with the Eagles being a poor football team, I don't really know if it's going to get slipped under the radar when you put on a display that bad, that poor. John Middleton showed his true colors, and he just tries to talk out of his ass. That's what he does. He talks out of his ass. He has no clue what he's saying. He denies a bunch of stuff that he already said. He, he tries to defend things in such a brutal way, and it's like, oh, everyone's against me. And another problem is, when it's on Zoom, the Phillies can kind of control what's going on in real life. A reporter can follow up a question. Oh, hold on, hold on. And kind of bump in and ask another question. On Zoom, the Phillies people can mute who they want and they can kind of put who they want up next and they control the order of questions and it kind of helps out the Phillies during this moment. Another thing that's crazy is you know John Middleton knew some of these questions were coming. You knew that it took so damn long for him to even come down with this process that he had to have known, right, like, Knowing that he was going to go in another direction with Matt Klentak, you know that he knew certain questions were coming, yet he still failed. So how do you have so much time to prepare and then fall flat on your face the way that he fell? It's just wild that we're in this situation. It's frustrating. I don't trust anybody involved. 
I, I need them to go out of the box, go get no new people, call Tampa Bay, mix up the scouting, get a whole new system in terms of prospects. But the problem is that is a long period of time. And that's what Matt Klintak was supposed to rebuild. And if Andy McPhail is helping John Middleton, who's only going to be here, so it seems about another year because of his contract, and John Middleton puts a lot of stock into what Andy McPhail says, why would I believe that he's now going to pick the right guy the second time around? Andy McPhail won a World Series how long ago? It hasn't even been relevant to this style of baseball whatsoever, and that hurts me. It really doesn't for how long it might take to go out and find a guy. Really? Do it now. Go get your guy now. Why are you talking about, oh, it might take up to a year? Up to a year? Up to a year? What else are you doing? What else could you possibly be doing other than going out and finding your guy? Because of COVID. Look, I'm not downplaying COVID. Plenty of ways to get around that, though. If you want to make sure you get the guy you want or you want to interview individuals, certain guys, specific people, you find a way. Pick up the phone. Do a Zoom. It shouldn't take that long. It really shouldn't. And to to put somebody in charge who runs an organization the same way as Matt Klentak, who's a clone, how can you go down the same road? You need change. You fire Gabe Kapler, you don't bring in another Gabe Kapler. You bring in a guy like Joe Girardi. You fire Brett Brown, you don't bring in another guy like Brett Brown. You end up going out and getting a Doc Rivers. That's what you need to do. You need change. You can't just have this man run the GM spot, interim GM spot, for over a year, six months to a year, however long it takes, when this franchise needs something new or else they are doomed even longer. Wild. Wild turn of events with this damn franchise. This episode of Sports Talk with Broads is sponsored by Orbit Energy and Power, by the way. Their solar program helps eliminate your electric bill completely by offering flexible financing solutions such as $0 down. In addition, they will make sure you receive all the state and federal incentives available for switching to solar. They provide water purification systems, backup energy services, battery storage, and more. So visit their information. It's down below in the description. Look, it's weird to be talking about the Phillies and being this heated about the Phillies on a Sunday afternoon. Now, the Eagles play late 820 Sunday night football. It's probably going to be a big-time blowout. Who the hell knows, though? Because every time you think they're going to lose, they find a way to win, and who who the hell knows what's happening? But it's so hard while I have Red Zone on in front of me and I'm watching all the games flipping around. It's so weird being this hated about Phillies baseball and disgusted about John Middleton, but I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait for the Eagles to kind of blow over and talk about this mid-next week. This had to be discussed now because I don't know if people realize how bad this really is. This is showing signs of Joshua Harris, David Blitzer type ownership issues. And you thought that when the whole Bryce Harper signing happened that that would now transform this team. And you thought that Matt Klintak would, uh, his five years would be way better than this. You have no system. Literally no system. How do you win games? While the Braves get Ian Anderson at three. Phillies pick Mickey Moniak. There is a philosophy problem all the way through this organization. When John Middleton mentions that it has been a 100-year problem, a 100-year problem, you can't stay the same. That's idiotic. That's moronic. If that's the case, something has to happen. It needs to be a full-on wipeout. You are recognizing it, John Middleton. I give you credit for recognizing it's been a 100-year issue. It has been. You're right. So then change it. So then make moves. Get new baseball people in there. You just mentioned how the baseball people messed up what you wanted to do with JT Real Muto. So get rid of them all. Oh, but then that means you need to admit that this isn't going to happen overnight. But we're not dumb. We're not stupid. We already know that. What would be dumb is giving us the same slop that you have been giving us. 500 seasons. 
So many issues. So many bullpen arms. I look around the league. I'm watching these playoffs, right? 100 out of the pen. 99 out of the pen. Yet here comes all the crap that Klintak put together. 92. How about Cole Irvin? What was he, 89? Come on! What analytics are telling you to go down that road? Your analytic team is even garbage. Once again, not anti-analytics. Anti-Phillies analytics. Big difference because some of these teams that are rocking and rolling and playing pure baseball, they use analytics too. All these teams that are succeeding, they use analytics. Their analytic team is just working. Their numbers actually make sense. I'm sweating. I'm pissed. And now, after I'm done this, I'm going to have to sit down and watch the Eagles play. That's going to be terrible. Terrible! We'll see, though. Maybe I'm surprised by the end of the night. Clueless organization. Clueless John Middleton. I've turned full on him. I want my damn trophy back, he says. Then do something about it. I know people get all upset about the luxury tax and all this and all that, and I get it. It does bother me that the luxury tax is holding them back. But in reality, I think the luxury tax is like the the last problem, right? Because you wouldn't need to worry about the luxury tax if you had prospects that you can utilize with plenty of years of arbitration that barely get paid any money early in their career. If you fix all the other issues, the luxury tax problem, it's not even intensified the way that it is. You can't just buy a team. I, I hate to break it to you, but I understand the luxury tax thing, and like I, I get it and I don't get it. You're going to have to go over it at some point, I would imagine, but at the same time, if your other issues are fixed and your GM can draft and you can actually develop prospects in your system, the luxury tax problem is the last problem on the list when it's ready to compete. But you can't buy a full roster when you can't call up anyone that can actually succeed or give your team any sort of positives. You're strapped. You'd be paying way too much money. Way too much money over the luxury tax. Oh! All right. There you have it. That's it. I'm done. I got to stop here. I'm going to lose my voice. Thank you all so much for listening, and I will see you next time.